Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Indian Hotels Company Limited Earnings Conference Call for the quarter and financial year ended 31st March 2024. On the call we have with us today Mr. Puneet Chatwal, Managing Director and CEO, IHCL, Mr. Giridhar Sanjeevi, EVP and CFO, IHCL, and Mr. Ankur Dalwani, CFO Designate. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Puneet Chadwal. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining our global conference call for Q4 and FY2324. Today, we would like to focus on 10 key messages summarizing our performance, journey over the last financial year, and expectations for the future. Firstly, achieving Avant targets or achieving key Avant targets ahead of time we embarked on a journey in 2022 wherein we set specific targets under our Avant 2025 strategy. We are pleased to share that we have already achieved our key objectives well ahead of time. We aimed at achieving EBITDA margin of 33% and we have delivered EBITDA margin of 33.7% in last financial year. We promised a portfolio of 300 hotels and as of 31st March, we have achieved a portfolio of 310 hotels, including 19 pipeline. Our third objective of achieving zero net debt level had been achieved long back, and in fact, we have now surplus cash reserve of over 2,200 crores. Furthermore, we had promised a balanced portfolio, and now we have achieved a 60-40 mix of capital light versus capital heavy assets. And to summarize on the first point, we promised and we have delivered on all fronts. Number two, best ever Q4 and full year financial performance. We are very pleased to share that our record performance has continued in Q4, making this the eighth consecutive quarter of best ever performance for IHCL. Our consolidated revenue grew 17% year on year to 6.952 crores. EBITDA grew 20% year-on-year to 2,340 crores, yielding EBITDA margin expansion of 100 basis points to 33.7%. More importantly, our bottom line grew by 26% to Rs. 1,259 crore. On the standalone basis, we continue to deliver stellar results with revenues growing 20% year-on-year to rupees 4590 crore and EBITDA margin expanding by 200 basis points to 41.3%. 40, Some of you would recall pre-COVID our consolidated revenue was lower than what we have as standalone revenue in the last uh, financial year. That brings me to point number three. We delivered manifold increase in return ratios. We have delivered superior returns both in terms of return on equity and return on capital employed in the last six years. <clears throat> For that, since we began our journey with Aspiration 2022 strategy, since 1718, for that matter, our ROE has increased 7x to 14% and ROC has increased 3x to 15% in FY2324. Moreover, IHCL's EPS has increased 11x from rupees 0 0.8 in FY 2017-18 to rupees 8.9 in FY 23-24. Fourth, market leadership. IHCL continues to outperform the industry on RefPAR with a premium of 65% over the competition on pan-India basis. With presence across various price points, our hotels command healthy premiums over the industry in all key markets. We have around 100 hotels in the top seven cities with diversified presence across customer segments and price points. We are well positioned to capture the surging spiritual demand with presence in 50 plus religious, 
or spiritual destinations. Number five, our portfolio growth. We continue to demonstrate industry-leading growth with 53 hotels and 34 hotels opened during FY23-24. This is the highest in any single year done by anyone. More importantly, with 218 hotels operational and 92 in pipeline, we crossed the milestone of 300 plus hotels portfolio. IHCL entered into a strategic alliance with the Muja Neotia Group's tree of life resorts, offering our sales and distribution network to its portfolio of 14 resorts across the country. Just for the sake of clarity, when I said this is the highest done by anyone, it is based on organic growth and it is based on the Pan India figures and not the global figures. Number six, unique mix of capital heavy and capital light. Our current operational portfolio has a balanced mix of 60% capital light and 40% capital heavy assets. The capital heavy portfolio drives operating leverage and has demonstrated strong growth on the top line, but more importantly at the EBITDA level on the back of effective asset management and strategic addition of new hotels. On the other hand, capital light portfolio provides resilience. Our capital light business is comprising mainly of management fees and new and reimagined businesses currently contribute roughly 14% to consolidated revenue and in the near future contribution from this high margin portfolio is expected to increase to 20% of consolidated revenue which in turn will drive margin expansion for the overall business. Number seven, new brands and reimagined businesses. IHCL's new businesses vertical comprising of ginger, cumin, armor stays and trails, the chambers and the reimagined Tat Sats reported a revenue of 1,600 crores. Obviously this does not include the revenue of Tat Sats but of the other verticals that I just mentioned. At a growth of 35% over the previous year, new businesses grew at double the pace of core IHCL enterprise which grew at 17%. New businesses now account for 12% share of IHCL enterprise revenue, showcasing an expansion about, of about 150 basis points from the previous year. Now I come to Tatsats. Tatsats clocked a revenue of rupees 900 crores at 40% growth over the previous year, with a market share of almost 60%, maintaining an industry-leading EBITDA margin of 25.5%. Ginger reported a brand revenue of rupees 486 crores, growing 34% over, over the previous year, aided by the flagship Ginger Mumbai Airport Hotel, contributing over rupees 25 crores in the first full four months of operation. Ama Says and Trails achieved a portfolio milestone of 200 homestays bungalows, with 103 added in the last financial year. So, Cumin Brand also achieved a milestone of crossing rupees 100 crore in its GMB or brand revenues in FY23-24. Finally, IHCL will also introduce a new brand as we announced in the last call. This is our reimagined version of Gateway, a full service hotel offering in its new avatar in the upscale segment. This will be a similar story like the Ginger which was reimagined in the years 2018 and 2019. The Gateway brand rollout will commence with 15 hotels and will scale to 100 by 2030. Number eight, strengthening competitive advantages. We remain committed to investing in our assets and building our capabilities for the future, thus strengthening our competitive advantages. IHCL in FY22-23 commenced a five-year capital deployment plan of over rupees 3,500 crores towards asset upgradation and select new strategic investments. This includes strengthening of our digital capabilities with new brand websites, implementation of new ERP system, and data lake for advanced analytics with AI and ML capabilities. Some of these launches, especially of the new brand sites, you will start seeing from the first week of May onwards. That means in eight days from now. 
Number nine, Patya, our industry leading ESG plus program. Uh, we have achieved significant milestones this year on our ESG plus program. And IHCL now uses 37% energy from renewable sources and has installed 343 EV charging stations across 142 locations in India. Continuing our journey of eliminating single-use plastic, IHCL has installed 40 bottling plants and achieved 48% recycling of the water that is used. IHCL also partners and operates 32 skill centers today across 15 states in India. Finally, maybe the most interesting for all of you, what can we expect going forward, and rightly it's the number 10 uh, on the list. We feel that the hospitality industry upcycle is expected to be a long and sustained one. Of course, every now and then there will be some headwinds and some drops, but eventually nothing better than COVID can, uh, you know, give the proof of the resilience of this sector. So accordingly also, experts like Horvath HTL have uh, have predicted that demand will grow at a rate of over 10% annually for the next three to four years, while the supply will continue to lack demand. Most of the future supply is expected to come outside of the key markets or non-tier one cities. We are very much as IHCL in sync with what Horvath uh, has been writing. Within the IHCL context, we expect to deliver consistent double-digit top-line growth, therefore, with sustained margins and continued portfolio growth with a target to open 25 hotels in FY25. We had guided 20 for last fiscal. <clears throat> if we include Tree of Life, it's 34. If we exclude that, it's 20 hotels open as we had guided, and we are very much confident of opening a minimum of 25 hotels, and that's the guidance we are providing. Our new business will continue to grow also over 30% uh, in the next fiscal, which last year was at 35. As the base gets larger, uh, the guidance you can expect uh, will be in the range of 30 now and going forward maybe at 25%. Our focus also remains on evolving our brandscape and strengthening our competitive advantage with extremely prudent capital allocation in strategic opportunities. However, we are very well positioned with the cash position that we have, with the zero net debt that we have, to take advantage of any strategic opportunities that might come our way. Our new dividend policy has been approved by the board and we have proposed to declare dividend at a payout ratio of 20% of consolidated PAT for that at rupees 1.75 per equity share at 175%. This is subject to shareholders' approval, as we all know. Thank you so much for your attention, and we now open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Binay Singh from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Um, uh, hi, team. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, one clarification and one question. Just on clarification, on slide uh, 51, when we talk about 4% uh, ARR growth, uh, this I assume is including Ginger Mumbai Airport, right? So which is why the number looks lower than what it was uh, two quarters back. One second, Binay, we are looking at it. So, occupancy is that ARR. Yes, it includes all brands, um, 
not just ginger but all yeah, brands that includes ginger mumbai and mumbai airport then also uh, standard only ginger mumbai no sorry uh, it's only ginger mumbai airport and standard yeah. so yes it includes mumbai airport. yeah because that would have to when extend diluted the room rate growth yes uh, and uh, secondly just uh, slide 47 uh, um, uh, if you look at uh, the taj business you know we are we are breaking it into business leisure and uh, palaces uh, could you a give us a little bit of a revenue breakdown also on these three segments and uh, question b link to that where do you see you see more scope for uh, occupancy improvement or room rate improvement among these where do you see a pushback in quite well for incremental opportunity to expand occupancy or room rate looks limited so that's the second question thanks mean our uh, you know there is a nominal increase that you expect every year but very important for us and our portfolio is our not like for like growth and with a company growing at the speed at which we are growing also the new openings dilute that percentage is that you see see it's not just the ginger mumbai airport in stand alone but if you take the overall picture then uh, even if it says like for like for example you know it takes 3 years normally for a hotel to stabilize unless it's opened in extraordinary circumstances so uh, established property let's say like taj lands end and uh, taj mahal palace in kolaba will have a different kind of increase versus let's say we have opened taj trees in mumbai there is a ramp up period so with this high growth in one way we are doing it because you all like to see these percentages uh, but maybe we need to show it differently going forward saying what is it for hotels that have been in operation for a minimum period of 3 years uh, and how does that percentage growth look and how does the new one look so the new one helps you that when the headwinds come they are all adding because most of that is on capital light but it comes at a disadvantage that it dilutes uh, the figures because technically we include all hotels which have been in operation for a minimum period of one year and then i think your previous point uh, if you were to exclude gma the eras would have grown by about 8% this is on the previous question which you had because yeah, of, yeah. of the you know gma the average has come down yeah no no i, I think uh, thanks for that and puneet i think your point is very relevant especially when you look at the pipeline ahead also we will see a lot more management contracts coming in so to an extent i think this slide in particular uh, will look a little diluted um, but if last question any commentary on the near term trends you know like how are you looking at demand uh, in this quarter uh april may quarter i understand sequentially it is weaker more on why why basis how do you see you know we we what we are saying is what we believe and we think that top line double digit growth is what we feel is going to happen now if in one quarter is in 9% and in the next one is 11 still the average would be 10 so i'm not saying it's 10 it could be 11 and 13 or uh, so i think anything which is north of 10 on an average for the year we feel uh, is a realistic number going forward because again that base has become larger to keep doing 18 20 22% growth is uh, is possibly uh, very aspirational and ambitious is not impossible but is aspirational and ambitious so anything which is north of 10 uh, gives us a very good uh, platform uh on all metrics that we that i mentioned while giving those 10 important points great great thanks for that team i'll come back in the queue thank you bill thank you the next question is from the line of archal kumar from hsbc please go ahead um yeah hi uh, thanks for my question um thanks for my question so first of all um uh we just wanted to understand um, about mice business so um, i mean you know uh, so do 
you think the mice business has uh, normalized and back to pre-COVID levels, or you think there have been few structural changes, um, i.e., bigger conferences, fat marriages, uh, you know, uh, I mean, and 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 which are significantly positive, and do you see a sustainability there? So, uh, so if you could please give us a bit of a color in the in terms of mice mice business, uh, especially with pre-COVID now versus now. See, in our um, estimation, this business is kind of grown by 17% uh, of the share of revenue for our, our business is 17%. But I think India is going through a structural change. We have not even reached 5% of the possible mice business by just the addition of Yashobhumi in Dwarka and Bharat Mandapam in Pragati Medan and the convention center in Kolkata and the one which is ahead and are getting more close to doing well is Geo in Mumbai. Right? So I think taking the mice out of the hotel business because when you have events where 2,000, 3,000 or more people could come in in one single hall, that kind of infrastructure never existed. So this is opening a, a, a big new opportunity. In terms of weddings, that is maybe a speciality on the Indian subcontinent and is going to stay a very important element of the culture and of the culture of celebration or as a culture of social gathering. And uh, we are seeing no change when it comes to weddings. There is nobody you know, worried about going into a hall because there was COVID. I think all that fear is gone. People are back and meetings are happening in a normal way. But what we have not yet seen is global events coming to India. We recently hosted in the month of February the Global Conference of Coke, as an example. Or, uh, uh, you know, eight, nine months ago, I don't remember the exact month, we had the launch of the new Dior collection at Gateway of India. So you will start seeing, or India will start seeing and witnessing more and more of these events. And hopefully as the largest hospitality ecosystem, we continue to benefit from it. And it's not a one-off like a G20. But also a G20 has created the infrastructure which will benefit hospitality sector going forward. And um, Achal, maybe one simple answer here is not only has gone back to what it used to be, it has improved. And when it comes to new facilities, we are not even at 5 to 10 percent of possible utilization. Right. Um, fair enough. Uh, very clear. Um, other thing I wanted to understand, you just spoke about uh, the gateway hotels and you mentioned that you're going to have 15 hotels and, and probably end up by 100 hotels um, by 2030, if I understood correctly. So, uh, I mean, what 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 is the logic? I mean, why you want to have additional another uh, brand and where how how you think you want to position it within your existing um, Taj Taj selections and Vivanta and all. So, where exactly you see this gateway hotels uh, uh, to be placed and what is the logic? I mean, what kind of what kind of benefits do you see? What synergy do you see? I mean, excellent, uh, very good question, Achal. I'm glad you asked it. See, Taj. We have worked a lot on the last five years in upgrading and investing in Taj, and rightfully it got acclaimed as India's strongest brand across all sectors by brand finance and also world's strongest hotel brands for, you know, in, in the last uh, three years. And this year the verdict is going to come in June. Now Taj is and was always a luxury positioning. Somewhere it got diluted for whatever reason 20 years ago, when we added uh, by Taj in Vivanta and the Gateway Hotel had become Taj Gateway. So when we started the journey of Aspiration 2022, we put the Gateway brand in the drawer and we always communicated and guided. We will bring it out, A, when we have the critical mass in the brands, B, when we have clarity on the brandscape and how an evolution in India could take place, C, when we feel now is the moment, and that's what we feel is now, because your Tier 2, Tier 3 cities cannot afford a Taj 
as the cost to build a Taj and your ability to charge are not in sync. So if you look at the press release that we have given and the destinations that we have given, doing a Taj hotel there would be a challenge. At the same time, we reimagined Vivanta five years ago and we said Vivanta is what it was supposed to be, Bo we want, something which is very chic, very boutique-ish, and that is not a brand that will fit into, let's say, every possible location like a Karnal or a Barnala or etc. So these are the tier two, tier three cities which are coming up very strongly. And uh, that's the, the ethos and the, the style of the brand uh, is done in such a way, including its uniforms, that it would not fit in in such destinations. Plus, we have limited Vivanta with banqueting spaces. We don't want to have too much wedding and all that kind of business because either you are a mass brand or you are a chic brand. You cannot be both. Now, selections is very easy. It's a collection of names, names that are a brand in themselves in their relevant marketplace. For example, the president in Mumbai is a part of selections. The Connaught in Delhi is a part of selections. The ambassador in Delhi is a part of selections. The Blue Diamond in Pune, the Savoy in Uti. These are all names which are very well established over several decades, if not a century. So I think this was a gap that we had, but we had not reached 100 Taj hotels and we were not close to 100 Ginger. Now that we have crossed in the portfolio 110 Taj branded properties and Ginger in the next few months should get close to 100, it's already at 90, is the time to launch this brand, which will be upscale, full service, and a gateway to that city. It will be a very regional brand, which will have all the important characteristics of that city. So Gateway in Nasik will represent in its artwork, in its style, in its arrival experience, a Nasik. A Bekal in Kerala will represent Kerala. So I think this way we go out and become a very good, in a traditional uh, you know, world we would say, a very nice four-star full service brand and in the modern world we would say it's an upscale full service brand and we are also launching it because we are very confident of getting quickly to a critical mass of 50 hotels in operation and a portfolio of 100 very soon and we start with 15. We already start with double digit. We are not starting with something you build one hotel at a time and it takes another 20 years to get to the 20, 30, 40, 50 and that's why we have given the list in the press release of the names of the properties as well as the quarter of their opening. I hope this clarifies some bit. The rest, whenever you visit us in our office, we can show you on a chart. No, that's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, I think that, I think that's a great idea. Thank you so much uh, for, for giving the clarity. My final question, if I may, uh, please. Um, if you could please uh, share a bit of a plan in terms of your capex, so which you mentioned that 35 billion, and you already spent 10 to 11 billion, so which means you will spend additional 25 billion in the next year, especially on the digital and IT spend. And are you, uh, I mean, um, are you collaborating with the with the broad Tata group, especially in terms of, you know, airlines, I mean, they have Air India and also I've been thinking about this. Uh, recently, I could see very surprisingly Indigo uh, quietly launched a link on the website uh, where you can book the hotel. So do you have that kind of plan wherein you are collaborating with Air India and they can sell the holiday business where, you know, they can get the link. So, so I mean, just want to understand your close, close collaboration with Tata Group and your plans on the digital IT spend. How do you see the benefits from that? We, we are a Tata Group company and we always look at synergy uh, possibilities with all group companies and not just uh, airlines. But you are right because somehow airlines, hotels, flight catering, all this go together. So, so that part is there, but I, I think there was a lot of work to be done on Air India. They are getting close to a lot of initiatives that they had taken. And during the course of this financial year, we will try to align ourselves on strategic fronts. Uh, but maybe you should be asking this question again in a couple of quarters. But that does not mean we don't collaborate today. We do collaborate. We 
we went out and built the maharaja suite at taj mahal singh uh, we do wherever we can meals for them uh, we are doing almost all meals for vistara in you know, whatever stations we are except for hyderabad so okay. there is a lot of that collaboration that is already happening um, it's not that that is not there and uh, uh, i think uh, if air india was to join the loyalty platform of tata new that would be another new game changer completely for us so sometimes it's not direct it could come through other companies and at some point i'm sure they will also join like other companies have as they tend to benefit tata new will benefit and indirectly you know group companies like us will benefit so uh, i remain extremely optimistic not cautiously but extremely optimistic about the synergies driven also under the leadership of our group chairman thank thank you so much and and wish you great luck thank you our next question is from the line of shalin kumar from ubs please go ahead shalin kumar your line is unmuted you can proceed with your question hello yes shalin good evening good evening sir uh congratulate on the good set of numbers and a uh, good closing to the year uh, uh continuing with the achal question shalin there is lot of disturbance uh, mr kumar if you are using the speaker mode may we request to use the handset mode to ask the question please Mr Kumar we are not able to hear you Hello Is the line of the current participant is not clear uh, Mr Kumar if you can hear me you can rejoin the queue Yes Mr Kumar if you can use the speaker or if you can use the handset mode to ask the question Hello Yes sir. am i audible sorry i don't know what happened yes sir please go ahead so i just repeat my question so i was saying uh, 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 you know uh, rita i think you guys are still conservative when it comes to your uh, capex guidance uh, 3500 crores of capex in uh, next 5 years uh, uh, but you guys can be generating like 8 to 9000 crores of free cash during that period right so do you think you can be little aggressive on that that fact uh so then i think the the guidance is three thousand five hundred crores over five years out of which we said the program started two years back so it's effectively it's about twenty five hundred crores for the next three years and if you look at this year's capex numbers we've done about six hundred and fifty crores six hundred and thirty seven crores so essentially we're going to build on that and uh, you know i think the last quarter we did mention some numbers about who we think we will do next year we think this is what we can do if you know business as usual of course if there are opportunities which come up uh, you know which mr chatwal referred to earlier on the inorganic front then of course that becomes a, another area of uh, sort of where capex can get deployed uh, but as we as we see things today about 2 and 1/2 crore incremental capex over next three years is something which we think should be possible for us to spend and this is on uh, three main areas which is basically renovation which is you know an ongoing thing we do the okay. new builds and also uh, you know on the it side which is actually a very big focus for the company for this year mm-hmm. this and next eight next 18 next months next 18 months sure so effectively we are saying that this is the visibility right now it could obviously evolve right because definitely we will have cash to deploy absolutely that's right 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 so uh, second thing uh, just want to understand on the on the current performance i mean i saw a jump of uh, other expenses right and i think there is a lot of possible to quantify or give some suggestion on that because then our actual beta should be more than what it has been reported so shalin there are one of items which we have actually mentioned in the note on the other cost if you see our cost structure most of the all the costs are actually uh, uh, are below as a percentage of revenue if you compare with previous year the cost which has gone up is other cost and there are two elements to this there is one of items and if we were to correct it for that then the gap between uh, you know the previous year and this year actually is uh, negligible uh, and secondly uh, and any of these costs are in the nature of uh, one time and which are kind of incurred this year uh, and we don't expect them to be repeated next year secondly uh, a large portion of the increase 
is linked to uh, revenues coming from licensed hotels where license fees have been higher and the license fees set as part of other costs because of which the percentage is looking higher so this, this is a mixed effect which should actually correct in the next year please so, so so just to clarify uh, uncle over here that uh, you are saying that uh, my other expense other operating expense would have been similar to previous year had this one of not been there Yes, if you, if one of if one of one was not there, the one of was there in both the years, as in previous year as well as this year, we were to correct it for for the one of the numbers would be closer to 29 percent as opposed to you know 29.2 or 28.4 which you're seeing right now. Right. So that roughly roughly one fifty two hundred basis point margin could have been could have been better, which we should see from the next four uh, Q onwards. Next right? quarter, next year onwards. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Then okay. Then it's a great show, guys. Great show. Uh, that's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anuj from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers, sir. So three questions. Uh, firstly, <clears throat> on your new and reimagined business, especially Task Sets and Ginger. Which has clocked in almost two uh, x of growth versus our standalone entity. So, what has been the growth driver, and are they sustainable going ahead? Also, any new segment where our sets have scaled up its reach, which actually has led to such kind of a robust growth. And what will be your outlook for this entity going ahead? Secondly, any impact of ongoing elections, which we are witnessing across entire one, two, or three cities across ARR and occupancy, and. Uh, Lastly, we have already surpassed our Avant target a year ahead. So, what margin portfolio addition or portfolio mix do we see or expect for next year, sir? Thank you. Hi, hi, hi. Giri um, <clears throat> here. So, I think, see, as far as the first question on ginger and uh, star sets are concerned, I think there are a number of drivers. As far as ginger is concerned, ginger Mumbai Airport is obviously a big driver. The second thing is that we were upgrading properties from the old model to the new lean lux model. That has clearly driven. And third, from an F&B perspective, we have kind of graduated from the earlier format into humans, actually, which has also helped in terms of growth. I think these factors will continue to grow in our capital light uh, 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 fully fitted lease models on Ginger, actually. So Ginger, actually, we are very excited in terms of the opportunity to grow. Uh, that is number one. As far as start sets is concerned, once again, a number of drivers. Very, very clearly, the real the growth in the a number of airports, the growth in the airline passengers, the kind of mix which is happening, uh, and the way we are charging our customers between uh, you know meals as well as handling charges. Uh, so I think there are a number of factors once again, and productivity. <coughs> most importantly, productivity. Places like Delhi, as an example, there have been significant productivity improvements, which kind of ensure that we're able to do more meals given the same space actually. And Tatsats will continue to have that momentum. Uh, completely, actually. As far as this year is concerned, I think Puneet has outlined uh, in terms of the factors for this year. Uh, very clearly, I think uh, there may be some temporary impacts in terms of elections and all that, but otherwise, I think we do not see, given the long-term fundamentals uh, in terms of demand drivers, in terms of supply drivers, I think uh, we are clearly standing by the double-digit revenue growth that we have spoken about, actually. And I certainly think that, see, I think a lot of what has been happening is uh, you know in the industry there's momentum versus strategy. I think I think as from our perspective, I think we have a solid strategy, we have solid execution, and and we have a number of factors coming into play. The diversification in terms of top line, the the 125 city presence, which gives us a, a lot of network effects. As an example, the productivity in cost, the you know all of these are going to come together in terms of driving our performance actually. And I forgot the third question. Uh, so these are the two questions. Sir, so it was on the Avant target which we have already surpassed a year ahead. So, so going ahead, you know, in terms of our portfolio mix, because the last call or we actually had targeted to have 55, 45 kind of a ratio between the asset light and asset heavy. We are already at 60, 40. So going ahead, what would be our target in terms of this proportional mix? And also any target on the or outlook on the margin pressure would be helpful. See, we, as far as the uh, growth is concerned, see, we will continue to grow. I know there is a chart very clearly we are talking in terms of the, uh, the capital light and capital heavy. I think including pipeline, if you see the capital heavy is 28% actually. 
uh, and, and capital light continues to be 72%. So that is going to be the driving force unless some new opportunities like inorganic and other things come into play or, or new greenfield kind of opportunities actually. So that's the guidance. And as far as the margin is concerned, we have been very clear that the margin for us is an outcome rather than a target actually. We had to give a target five years ago because we were at 17%. And therefore, it is important to give a target and deliver, actually. Now, having achieved the 33%, I think we should, uh, it is more an outcome. If as a result of the action that we take with the leverage on the, uh, what do you say, operating leverage, if the margins go up, they will be an outcome, actually, rather than a target. So, I think that's the way to kind of look at it, actually. Okay, thank you, sir. And this is your gateway, but again, do you on the asset light model? Yes, at the moment, the 15 that we have highlighted, they are all on asset light. Thank you, sir. That's helpful and thanks for the opportunity. Wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shet from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, congratulations to me and team. My question is on the first one is IT spend. So, if we have to really look at ROI or so, is it for creating more business or also including cost saving? So, if you can give a little more color and how do we see its uh, payback time? So, IT spends, as, as you see, uh, what we've outlined here, there are two, three big areas. You know, basically, uh, the ERP software, which is really the heart of the financial software, we're upgrading it to much more, the most modern software, which is the S4 HANA RISE. And we expect it to actually give us a lot of productivity grains once it is fully rolled out across our portfolio. And these could be things like implementing a shared service, uh, you know, and and uh, getting cost uh, savings as, as that as we scale up. Uh, the the uh, parallelly we are also uh, doing a PMS upgrade, which is basically moving on a moving on a, a very uh, modern uh, upgrading from a current uh, current PMS which we have onto a on cloud uh, PMS. Again, this will go hand in hand with the ERP upgrade. And I think the benefits of this you will see over the next two, three, four years because this is not something which is, uh, you see the benefit immediately because it's a thing about productivity and saving which will flow into the PNL over a period of time. And I think as an organization, you know, we've been leaders uh, and therefore for us to maintain leadership, it is important that we are ahead of the curve and spend on IT and productivity investments. And that is why this, this has been called out this year particularly. One question for me, Puneet, normally our Q2 is a very soft uh, in history, but since last year we have seen that Q2 is little better, I mean, over a YOY, or maybe much better, and decline is not to which was earlier. So how do we see the trend, I mean, a quarterly trend, and what is really playing out that all the quarter may come, I mean, maybe not equal, but a decline over, I mean, previous quarter changing in the seasonality. See, there are three, four things. Number one is India is now not anymore talking October to March destination. It's becoming a 12-month destination. Okay. Number two factor is that uh, companies, including us, we don't wait till October to start making money. We start thinking about uh, profitability, you know, historically, 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, it was like this, that uh, we'll wait till September, October, November. So that is changed completely. Uh, I think it's true for the entire sector. Number three change is new destinations are coming up. So, you know, there was not so much airports, roads, trains, infrastructure, you know, all the spending that is making all these destinations in India accessible. So it's doesn't matter, you know, there are, if it is hot, you can go to the hills. If it is cold, you know, you can go to the south, you can go to Goa. So, I mean, India is 7,500 kilometers of coastline. It has 500 plus beaches. It has uh, a mountain range which is massive. It has a, uh, you know, it has a spiritual uh, destinations with almost 3 million plus uh, possibilities of people to go and visit on spirituality. So a lot of that is changing with the affluent India, which is getting the flavor of becoming the fifth largest economy. And if it is going to become third, so all these factors of taking short breaks, uh, spending uh, discretionary spend on leisure, 
will drive the change of hospitality from a discretionary sector to a consumer sector. That's what it is in very simple terms. And that is what is going to change your Q1, Q2. Q3 will remain strong with Diwali and all the wedding season. And Q4 also will always be the first and second uh, strongest quarters. And events like IPL also help. I have to say that uh, these events, India becoming a sports destination, whether you have World Cup hockey happening for women or you have Kabaddi Championship or IPL or, you know, all these things are helping. And at the same time, the supply is not coming at that speed as the way it came earlier. So, of course, hotels will get built, but we have a few years definitely where the demand supply imbalance is going to stay. So, all in all, this is uh, really what is, uh, uh, what is helping uh, us from an infrastructure point of view. But also our own growth, you know, we are adding so many hotels per month. Now, going forward, we are saying we will do more than two hotels a month. And if those two hotels are coming, majority is coming in capital light, it just keeps adding, uh, you know, where the flow through becomes higher. Yeah. So that's something we have been saying for now five, six years in a row. So effectively, does it mean that it will improve our rev par? For annualized on annualized basis from the whatever was the history. Normally it should, but as I said, uh, at the moment there is nothing that suggests the contrary. And based on a Horworth HTL report, as I said in the opening remarks, uh, the demand is supposed to grow at 10.6, which historically grew at 6.4%. Uh, so, so I think that should help. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Khanna from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I've got three questions. Firstly, if I look at slide 17 of your presentation, and uh, Puneet, if you could talk more about the supply narrative, because I was, I was going through an article, and uh, effectively, if you look at the top five international hotel chains and their uh, growth aspirations for next three to five years, uh, we are looking at close to 400, 450 hotels that are getting added, uh, effectively 50 to 60,000 keys that are being added by these hotel chains. So in that context, how should we think of this uh, narrative uh, about supply remaining constrained over next three to five? I would recommend very strongly to get uh, some of these uh, announcements made for the last three, four, five years, and then compare it to reality. Um, it's it's not it has not yet happened. Right? We have had this question since 2018 in different hospitality forums that. I participate in and in other calls. This is one of the ways of, you know, international way of marketing and getting uh, the thing. Maybe it happens, but up till now it is not. So it's very easy to go back and check. And I think a few days ago there was an article in, I think, Mint, uh, which gave the number of hotels in operation of the top players and the number of hotels in pipeline. I think... Uh, that's what one has to do. And in the pipeline also, you have to keep adding because 100% of the pipeline never gets built, no matter where in the world. So you have to look at, depending on the quality of the pipeline, a 70 to 80% number is a very strong number uh, because something happens. Somewhere some protest comes, somewhere some uh, PIL comes. Uh, somewhere, you know, some uh, developer, promoter runs out of money or ends up in some other issues. So things happen in a marketplace or a, a flooding happens or what a cyclone comes, you know, things just change. And uh, I would say this, this is what you've been reading is thanks to a recent investment conference that happened where a lot of people came and they made these statements because India is a happening place. Everybody wants to have a share of that growth and uh, the possibility to participate in that growth so that uh, nobody gets left behind. And it's good. It's good competition uh, to get. But I think uh, the number of hotels we have in pipeline, we are way ahead of anyone. And these are signed, legal, 
binding contracts that we announced. This pipeline is not projects which are under negotiation. We have another 90 under negotiation. So that is not what we count. Of the number of projects you have in negotiation, if that's 10, then the ones you actually conclude, you are very lucky if you conclude 20 to 25 percent. And, and the other thing, Karan, is that uh, you should also look at uh, the micro-market sector. Yeah, ultimately, hotels are a micro-market business. And if you look at our hotels in our micro-market, there's effectively no new supply coming in. I think that's number one. And number two, in all the key markets, we dominate in terms of the number of hotels as well as the price points, actually. And therefore, our ability to cater to different customer segments is also very high. So looking at supply alone, as a standoff, a standalone num uh, way of looking at it is not regular to integrate it with all the other factors, actually. Sure. Uh, my second question, uh, you know, given the significant surge in airfares, uh, especially post-COVID, uh, almost 50% versus pre-COVID, uh, how should one think about the ability uh, for hospitality exchange to continue driving ARR's growth, given the ADR is also up 30-40% versus pre-COVID? And as a follow-up, at, at, at what point do you think, uh, you know, international uh, destinations perhaps become more attractive or more lucrative in the context of rising airfare and hotel rates? I think if you look at the, if you look at our own portfolio, if you see the slide we put out by brand on ARRs and, you know, uh, occupancy, you will see that, you know, if you look at the Taj Business Hotel, that segment is a 13,700 average ARR, uh, you know, for Q4, and if you look at it for the full year, uh, similar number. So I think that we, we believe that there's still room to grow and ARRs is a function of demand supply at the end of the day. And like Giri said, not only supply uh, across the country, but what's the supply in the upcoming micro market. And if you look at, you know, last uh, four years or five years, ARR increase, a lot of it is also because there's been high inflation in the economy, which has also led to, you know, ARRs being that inflation being passed on to the customer. And that, that ability to pass on uh, inflationary increase is there till the time you have a good balance on demand supply. And I think that's something which we feel confident will remain in the foreseeable future. So I think if you think about it more conceptually, I think the ability to increase ARRs is still there. And of course, it will vary from hotel to hotel. It is not going to be uniform across the market. And uh, it will vary from uh, also from segment to segment and which, uh, you know, whether it's leisure or whether it's uh, which, which, uh, which brand we are talking about. So I think that's point one. Secondly, I think if you look at last year's data, there's been fair out of fair, fair, uh, favorite uh, of out, outbound travel from India, which has actually exceeded the pre-COVID level. In spite of that, we've had uh, you know we've, we've continued to sort of grow and see RFRs go up over the over the last 12 months. So I think that just shows that while uh, you know destinations outside India are attractive uh, for some people, there is still enough uh, demand in the country, and whether that's business demand or uh, leisure demand, which is kind of uh, you know, catering to our uh, our our hotels, uh, and you know, couple of things which are hidden or which are a potential upside is that we still are not back to our foreign uh, inbound tourists, right? We are still, uh, I mean, the statistics is, is about 85 percent of what was pre-COVID, but that also includes <coughs> the push we got from G20. If you were to adjust it for not that, that you're probably down to you know 70 to 85 percent of the pre-COVID level. So there is, uh, you know, and that should actually pick up. I think if you look at again various forecasts of that. They say itself they should be picked up, and then, you know, over the next uh, few years, we expect that to actually get to uh, almost like a 27, 28 uh, million tourists coming to India. And that is a big push from, from a big factor which will help us in sort of fill in some of our uh, leisure properties, which are already doing well but can obviously do better. So I think those are some of the other factors you should just think about, um, you know, and you think, as you think about uh, ERR's growth, because it's not, it's not about just one quarter or, you know, the full year, but I think what's the long term trajectory. And just building on what, uh, just building on what Anku said, see, we have always said that from a business era perspective, there's enough scope, enough scope, because really speaking, if you travel abroad, you see for the same kind of rooms and kind of quality, I think our pricing is much lower. So I think with the growth in business, I think the potential to increase business travel, business era is definitely there. On the leisure side, you know, it represents the long-term opportunity in terms of growth. See, the domestic resilience, as Anku pointed out, is very real actually which means that people are taking more trips, they're taking shorter trips. And many times when people take these holidays, they're not thinking of a destination. They have teams in and they want to go to some place actually, whether driving to destinations or what. And when you, when you look at these two, three day trips, especially what happens is that people have a wallet in mind, saying that I will spend about a lakh for this trip as an example. Then it doesn't matter, uh, Karan, in terms of whether the ARR is uh, 10,000 or 12,000 actually, as long as the wallet is maintained actually. Hence, I think... Uh, 
I think, you know, I think, and, and remember one thing, you know, the era uh, is really all about uh, the, you know, part of the business. 45% of our business is room revenue. There's everything else in terms of uh, F&B, in terms Thank of all the asset light businesses, the banqueting, the chambers, and a whole bunch of other things, actually. And hence, I think, don't look at it narrowly in terms of just ARR and repars, actually. I think there are multiple factors, and this is where I think the diversified network, the size of the network, is going to matter. If you are a two-hotel chain, then I think some of these factors, what you ask, are very real, actually. But when you are 125 cities operating with 200 hotels, actually, I think with a whole bunch of network effects, actually, I think these are all one, one of those factors, but eventually there are a number of, what do you say, factors which complement and supplement, actually. And then you need to look at it much more holistically, actually. Sure. And then, Giri, lastly, if you think of, uh, you know, your strategy to reintroduce the gateway brand, uh, do you reckon, uh, given the uh, sort of uh, 2,500 crores gross cash on the balance sheet and the kind of free cash flow that you're projected to generate, perhaps thinking about, about acquiring uh, a hotel chain operating in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities would have been a better strategy, or do you think that uh, uh, building a brand uh, or reimagining gateway is the right way to go forward? I think we have just begun with 15 hotels uh, and gateway as we have announced inorganic opportunities is something that we'll always be looking at for the right price and value. Yes, one thing does not exclude the other. Yeah. So the evolution of our brandscape is ongoing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what was only known as Taj Group, see how it has evolved. And uh, we will continue to evaluate as and when opportunities arise. Now, uh, we have launched Gateway, but I think you're saying it's, Acquiring tier two, tier three cities brand, there are not many, mm. and uh, and there are not many available for sale. So if there is one, then and it's on the market, then you can be sure that we will be a candidate uh, which will go for it. Yeah. The other thing Karan, is that you know I think with our size now, I think to some extent we can start talking ourselves as a consumer business actually. Which means that, and the reason I'm saying that, Karan, is that ultimately India is a heterogeneous country with different requirements. A tree of life caters to a certain segment. A gateway caters to a certain segment, which we were hitherto not able to service. And hence, I think what we are doing actually is expanding the pie. And that's the only way to look at it. And when we, we have a slide also in the presentation about uh, not just about the number of hotels, it's not just about serving different customers, but also different price points. That also matters. That also matters because the beauty of the price point thing is that it is not margin dilutive. If you go to ginger, uh, well, errors may be lower, but it is margin accretive actually. So I think I think you need to look at all of these factors. I think I think almost it's almost becoming like a consumer business at this point in time. Sure, this is helpful. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. We will take maybe one last question at the most, and if there is none, then we would like to close the call. The last question is from the line of Prashant Biani from Ilara Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, between uh, business and leisure, where do you see more scope of uh, improvement in occupancy? I mean, if you see the structural trend and you pointed out uh, the demand slide, that the long-term growth driver is there for both, but leaders should outstrip uh, uh, business side if you look at the if you look at that slide, which basically, you know, kind of gives you a, a sort, of, sort of a clue as to where the long-term demand is going to be from uh, from the various segments. I think if you look at our own hotels, you can see that there is, uh, you know, occupancy for various cards. So there is room for improvement, I guess, in both, but leader probably can do a little bit better in terms of occupancy and the long-term. No, I agree. In fact, I think, uh, I think if you look at leisure, I think uh, if you go in the month of June as an example to a lake climate, Earlier, a June month would be a low month, actually, but now domestic consumers are going. And, and many of these destinations are now becoming all-round year destinations, actually. So leisure does, and also look at our mix of business. Today, 75% of our business is still, is still in the business segment and 25% in leisure. Therefore, I would imagine that with the long-term opportunity and our presence in different leisure destinations, and we have the widest presence in the leisure destinations, actually. I think, therefore, the opportunity in leisure structurally is much better, actually. Right. And, uh, sir, in the next three to five years, uh, which of your hotels can become as big as the big five machines of slide 32? Slide 32. Uh, 
security. Which is also a big mission in the end. I think which 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 additional pairs will come into this kind of a top five market? Many. Yeah, so I think uh, we are opening many big machines. If we look at the development with uh, Bangalore International Airport, which is not owned, it's a management contract, but we have a combo development of Vivanta and Ginger totaling 750 rooms. Uh, we're doing uh, almost 300 rooms in Ektanagar, which is owned. We're doing a big one in Cochin Airport. Uh, we are doing, just now signed and announced the Ginger uh, Mopa Airport in Goa, 300 rooms. So we are doing big boxes. Um, we are very much looking forward to, as nobody asked this question today, so I will mention it as it's the last one, to the redevelopment of Sea Rock, which would be uh, at least two of these big boxes on slide 32 alone. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, these kind of boxes, they take time. And uh, that's why CROC will take a bit of time, but it will happen. And maybe some of our existing hotels, which are currently loss making, potentially have an opportunity to come into this uh, um, big box. And, you know, basically, which is currently not on the slide, but could come in the slide if we are able to turn around some of those hotels. Right. Uh, I mean, sir, just extending this, uh, more, all of these are basically in large cities and owned by us. So, except for CROC, are we looking at uh, uh, adding any new large hotel owned by us at a city location uh, in the Taj or, uh, yeah, mainly? Yeah, we, are, we are working on it. Um, maybe we have an answer in, uh, in the next quarter or so. We are working on a very large opportunity uh, in leisure segment. And um, actually not one, we are working on two. And let's see which one, as a company owned, so uh, where we have the land already for almost 30 years with us, uh, there are some planning issues, just like the Sea Rock, we have two such large projects, and we have to just do the building, so it's not acquisition of land, and so it will, it will be like a ginger Mumbai airport where we had the land, so it's a part of our asset management initiative. So let's see where it gets to. We're we are putting in a lot of effort there, and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, at least one of those two, if not both, works out in the next quarter. Sure, that's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone who joined the call today. Should you be uh, should we have more questions or other people who didn't have a chance, please feel free to reach out to Giridhar Sanjeevi, Ankur Dalwani, or myself uh, in the next days. We'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you for joining in, and um, uh, thank you for uh, listening and for all your support. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you. On behalf of the Indian Hotels Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.